So um, I still have got my iPhone 6S here, which is completely smashed. As you can see here from the from the camera, right? It's completely fucked up. It's smashed to smithereens there, all all broken up. I dropped it a few times as I usually do, and then I think one time that I did drop it when I was going out one day at a club. I dropped it on the floor and a car ran over it, but it didn't break it overall, which is fine. It kind of just smashed the screen, which is great. Um, so, but I've kept it. The reason why I've kept it because the iPhone six still has uh, Touch ID. And I love Touch ID for contactless pay. It's my favorite, favorite thing. And um, when the iPhone, I think 8, is when they introduced um, the face recognition thing. I might I think it might have been 8. Um, I was really bummed out. I think it might have been 10, actually. Maybe the iPhone X. Whatever it was, I was really bummed out because I love Touch ID. I think Touch ID is one of my most favorite features of the iPhone of late, right? Um, when contactless pay came around, um, it took a while for people to kind of adopt contactless pay because, you know, there were kind of concerns about privacy, about the ease of how much you could spend, about the limits on it, blah, 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 blah. But over time, you know, um, with people having, you know, um, busy in, you know, busy metropolitan life, you know, you end up in a rush. People just tend to always want to tap and quickly move on. Right. Don't take receipts and keep it moving. And contactless pay is a good way to kind of circumvent that. You can link it to your card. and It's all kind of stored and there securely on your phone. And all you got to do is kind of raise it up to the reader, tap with your fingerprint, and it kind of pays for it automatically. And I kind of was more comfortable with that as an action overall, as opposed to kind of raising the phone up to your face. And then, do you know what I mean, it just didn't, that kind of action just seemed a bit weird to me overall. I just liked how intuitive it, it was just holding the phone in your hand because it's what you did naturally with your card anyway. So when that kind of feature got taken off for the iPhone X, uh, the iPhone 8, whatever it might have been, however beautiful the design was, that was one thing that I kind of was hoping would stay, and it didn't stay. And that's kind of been the reason why I necessarily haven't upgraded my phone. Now, most of it's to do with laziness. Most of it's to do with the fact that it's quite expensive, the phone anyway. But majority, if I'm really honest, is the fact that, you know, the the, the camera quality on the iPhone 6 is pretty high still. I can still record in 1080p if I want to record a quick YouTube video or whatever. Um, if I want to take a really high definition picture, I can do that still at this moment with this phone. And it's got to have the benefit of Touch ID. But this Touch, this um, top trends report from 2019 also kind of issued the things to me because there's a, there's a there's a thinking in the industry that what's going to happen is that they're going to bring back touch id i saw a rumor but it's going to be with a glass so with a with a bezel of screen so you know how the iphone x is where it's got no bezel right around it it's going to be the same but just on a touch id on the actual screen which is going to be fucking insane to see right I'm gonna, i can't wait so basically effectively the home button will come back but it won't be the home button as we know it, it won't be this kind of physical home button that we have here right it won't be this one it'll be like a home button that'll be on the glass right or it'll be a home button that comes up whenever you need it and i thought that was quite interesting so i've got the top trends here that i'm going to quickly run through and show you um Number one trend that was quite funny that I didn't see the point of is foldable because so I'm sure some of you saw pictures of it, images of that. I think it was a Samsung phone that can kind of fold. Um, I didn't really get the point of it. Why would you want a foldable phone? Um, I I would always imagine if you had a, if you had a kind of a, a new tablet, a new iPad Pro, or whatever, maybe you just have a bag that was adequately kind of fitted. You wouldn't necessarily be buying a coat that would fit that whole thing in one place. It just wouldn't be that comfortable to wear. But um, this article says here um, we've already seen two, well, one and a half really, and you can be sure we'll see even more as smartphone manufacturers scramble to figure out next big thing. Which is weird, isn't it? Why would you? Want to it's so and it's it's such an old school. It's such a old school kind of idea, isn't it? in a new age right a foldable phone why would you want that you just the whole idea of the foldable phone is that you can't you can do so much you can fit into a small device right but we're making our phones smaller and thinner than they've ever been before of yesteryear so now they want to get things in bigger devices but they also want the added advantage of making them small be able to be foldable um and they're not you know it's foldable but it's still got a little like a lot of an arch there like it's foldable to what extent to what really maybe to a certain extent of a book it looks like a standard book size but if you want a book size tablet just buy a book size tablet um anyway the article continues here um the royal is fascinating but ex execution leaves something to be desired. Samsung's prototype, meanwhile, is just that. The company made it uh, the centerpiece of its recent developer conference, but didn't really step out of the shadows of the product, almost certainly because it's not ready to show off yet. So, okay, so that what we saw was a prototype, okay, of the Samsung device. Um, check that out later. Um, now that the long-promised technology is ready to cons consumers to form, it is safe bet that we'll be seeing a number of companies exploring the form factor. There will no doubt be a long uh, by the fact that 
uh, Google partnered with Samsung to create a version of Android tailored to form factor, similar to its embrace of top notch of Android P. Of course, like the 5G, these designs are going to come with a major premium. Once the initial novelty has worn off, the hardest task of all will be convincing consumers they need one in their lives. And that, and I'm not convinced, man. I'm not convinced I'm going to need a foldable phone. I'm not convinced that, you know, I've been, that's what I've been dying for in my repertoire of electronics, that I need something to fold and put in my bag. Because like I said, if I need something foldable, I'm just going to get it in the size of I want it to fit in the things that I have, right? That's the, that's the main reason why I've got an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone XL or one of the bigger ones. Is because for the most part, especially previously, now not, not now not so much now, but a few a couple of years ago, I was just, for the most part, I only just wore skinny jeans, right? Now I'm, home, I'm wearing quite a lot of baggy trousers, but if you're wearing skinny jeans all the time, you can't necessarily have a massive phone in your pocket. So it's not necessarily that comfortable, especially a skin tight jeans. So the most, it's just functionality. I'd carry like a smaller phone. And usually I'm always having books in my bigger pockets. Anyway, I will not necessarily want a book and a, an electronic thing in there just too heavy so the idea that I'd, I'd want a foldable device just a little bit ludicrous to me because i want you know i want stuff that's going to fit into my life i don't want stuff that i'm going to need to bend and cajole into it just doesn't make any sense personally um if you're gonna if you're gonna do that you might as well have a why not have a foldable laptop i guess laptops are already foldable but it just doesn't make any sense anyway it continues to my favorite piece here about the embedded fingerprint um, readers. So uh, the flip side on the race for infinite displays is what to do with the fingerprint reader. Some moved it to the rear. Others like Apple did away with it in favor of face scanning. Of course, for those unable to register a full 3D face scan, that tech is pretty easy to, easy to, easy to spoof. For that reason, fingerprint scanners aren't going away anytime soon. Great to hear. Uh, OnePlus 6T was among the first to bring the in-display fingerprint scanner to the market and it works like a charm. Here's how the tech works, quoting from one write-up from a few months ago. Um, when the screen is locked, a fingerprint icon pops up, showing you where to press. When the finger is in the right spot, the AMOLED display flashes a bright light to capture the scan on the surface from the reflected light. The company says it's, it takes around a third of a second, though in my own testing, that number was closer to one second or sometimes longer as I negotiated my thumb into the right spot. Samsung S10 is expected to bring that technology when it arrives around February time frame and it, will be, it wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more inventions do it. So at the moment, it's not quite where it should be, right? It takes a little bit too long to do. I say too long because it's one second, right? But you know how people are with smartphones. They want things to be done in an instant, right? So it's taking a little bit longer than what it should be. But if they get it right, if they kind of perfect this and kind of get it where it needs to be, then we're going to kind of do away with Face ID. Because again, Face ID can be spoofed on it. I've seen pictures. I've seen videos of people um, buying those really expensive like silicone mask and then being able to kind of, you know, unlock someone's phone. But, you know, that's a hell of a lot of trouble to go to someone to unlock someone's phone. But it can happen. Don't get me wrong. But I think the easy way to do it is really the fingerprint ID for the most part. Um, it works better. It's, it's intuitive. It's something that everyone's kind of comfortable to do for the most part because you're usually always holding your hat, your phone in that fashion anyway. So if you to kind of just press it on there, it's much good idea. I like the idea that when your screen is locked, the fingerprint icon comes up so you can just press your finger on top of it, which is great. I'm assuming it's going to be quite difficult to do on the glass screen. But, you know, for the most part, in most places that have fingerprint scanners, it usually is kind of like a glassy sort of screen, right, for the most part, I'm assuming. I'm interested to see how they develop it. I'm interested to see how Apple do it overall. So that will mean as well that we'll probably see the end of notches and stuff as well and bezels on phones because they're able to do probably like edge-to-edge -edge display but those are some of the trends that are happening so far in the mobile world or from TechCrunch, you can check that uh, article out um the article is titled uh the top smartphone trends to watch in 2019 from TechCrunch. um again i'll link this in the show notes for those that want to read it fully but there's some good little notes on there for you to kind of like spec out there but i'm happy to see that they're going to bring in fingerprint scanning on a glass screen